heck? I think that's how I'm gonna start streaming. I didn't even put the mic in the right place. I am having the most put together of days, let me tell you. Good luck uh, if you think you can stop me. <laughs> nah, give me a moment. Okay, come on, mouse. Mouse, you unmuted OBS. Come. I was pressing the wrong button. Pro streamer right here. <laughs> Let's get that out of the way. Nah. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Um, I'm having exactly, precisely, the most put together day right now. I can't even think with the music on. Wow. Yeah, I, okay. There we go. So, my day. My day started an hour and a half before my alarm was supposed to go off, which is okay, fine. And I got to curl up with the dingus for a few minutes and give him a hug on his way out the door. <laughs> Welcome on in, Hunter. Oh boy. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so woke up an hour and a half before my alarm and just accepted the birds were screaming their little heads off outside, which is to be expected. And we had the windows slightly open last night because it was stuffy in the bedroom. Fine, okay. They're screaming their little heads off. Okay, yeah, I, I get it. Between that and the light, there's no way in hell I'm getting back to sleep. Okay, so I get up and I start my day. Even, <laughs> Borb's gotta do what a borb has to do, seriously. <laughs> but so, basically I go, okay, I'm streaming, you know, now, but when I was thinking of it earlier, I was thinking of it as, you know, this evening, which is, you know, being up early on a day when I'm streaming in the evening is really not a good combination usually, but I, what else am I gonna do? It's not like I can nap. And even if I could, the ADHD meds kind of keep that from being a reality so okay I I mentioned the other day that uh, I recently got put on a new medication which is fine it's not a huge thing it's just it wants to be taken on an empty stomach about half an hour before you have anything which means delaying caffeine it means delaying other meds as well or at least that's how I'm interpreting it because heaven knows I don't need meds to do weird things so, okay. I've been really good about this for like the week that I've been on this thus far. Until today. I remembered to eat, but I for and I even remembered caffeine. I forgot to take my primary ADHD med. Now this is not necessarily earth shattering stuff. You know, it is not the kind of thing where I, if there are some medications that you really do have significant withdrawal symptoms early on. The thing is, caffeine tends to mitigate a bunch of the withdrawal symptoms of ADHD meds. Yeah, things like um, stimulants are vasoconstrictors. So they make your uh, blood vessels narrower, which your body sort of get used, it gets used to. So that then when you go off of it, between that and some of the neurotransmitters and stuff going weird, that's part of why you get like caffeine headaches. If you don't, uh, if you're used to having it and you don't have it. My med kind of does the same thing, but once again, caffeine and my med have this similar side effect. So it masks that. I'm also used to not necessarily being 100% first thing when I wake up. Okay. Well, unless I wake up at 5 a.m., but that's a different issue. <laughs> Woo boy 2, electric boogaloo, seriously. So, one of the big ways in which my ADHD manifests and really messes with my day-to-day -day life if I'm not careful is a phenomenon that I call time-holing. 
I originally learned this term from a, f or picked up this term rather from a friend in college who described it as what happened. There, there was this one guy on campus. Um, I'm just gonna call him Joe Schmo. So, this guy, Joe Schmo, was the sort of person who knew everyone and always had fascinating conversational material. Uh, the problem is that if you got in a conversation with Joe Schmo, you would get time hold. If you weren't careful, if you weren't like actively looking at a clock, you'd end up engaged in conversation and next thing you know, three hours later, oh crap, I missed a class and a few other things, oh god, I have a homework assignment that I had to get in. Or, or the, oops, it's accidentally 3 a.m. hanging out in the student center forum. Yeah, whatever. So that's where I picked up the term from. But it's not just something that applies to people for me. It applies to basically any task that I could sink into, which can include things like gaming and reading and a whole bunch of other things. It's, I guess it falls under the category of a subset of hyperfocus where I just stop relating to time. Like, I talk about hyperfocus as being something where I shut out the world and you know, work on things, but when that extends to your sense of time, we run into issues. So I had a bunch of things that I was supposed to do today that never happened. On the other hand, I can tell you that I've had some positive experiences <laughs> with the uh, match with the, the third-party matchmaking for Dota Auto Chess <laughs> uh, provided by QIHL. <laughs> um, I only realized what time it was when my oh crap, I need to get ready for stream alarm went off. I'm not really sure where the afternoon went. I was supposed to hit the store. I was supposed to, you know, scoop the cat litter, do a few other things. And it just... Of course, the kittens have been yelling at me. Like, usually they can pull me out of a time hole, but this particular one, I was just lost in. And I, I suddenly understand, or well, when my alarm went off, I suddenly understood why my, well, why they'd been screaming their little heads off at me for a while. I did remember to feed them, and I did remember to, you know, heck, I even put the, the, the fountain in the dishwasher yesterday so that it could get you know, stainless steel, it can go in there, no problem. Put it back together this morning. I, I managed a couple of things, but, uh, <laughs> Tis a pity we aren't able to remember how to speak cat. I'm pretty good at understanding what the kittens are saying. The problem is that if I'm not at my computer, I have a much easier time understanding them. But half the time they just scream at me while I'm sitting here doing stuff because they're like, I want cuddles! I want attention! Not too much attention. I want some attention. I joke sometimes, uh with uh, staged that Pharaoh is Tsundera Kitty. Because sometimes he wants to be close, but not too close. <laughs> Justify just climbed up on the boxes to be able, so that he could uh, look out the window in my office. It's a low set window. So I put like some of the banker's boxes from when we were moved um, in front of it so that he's able to sit and look at the world outside because a lot of the windows in the house he can't quite reach. But... <laughs> he's enjoying it. Ah. <sighs> so yeah, um, that said, I was still... I, I, I had been thinking for a while about having today's stream title be a DLC joke. As in, you know, have something that would have DLC as an acronym. Except I could not, for the life of me, up with one that I liked enough. The microphone keeps drifting down. Let's get this screwed in a little tighter. Yep, kittens have messed with it some. So, yeah. Um, <laughs> a kitten clawed my foot <laughs> as I was uh, trying to figure out a title. 
and this is after they'd been screaming their heads off at me for a while. So suddenly I had a title. Ah, uh, that's how my day's going. My day is a trip. <laughs> um, Hunter noting, uh, <laughs> only just clocked the acronym there. Mm hmm. Well, because we're in the Hat in Time DLC, so I. Low hanging fruit, but I had to make the joke. So, Hunter, you have two kitties and a dog who thinks he's a kitty because, uh, reasons, I guess. Peer pressure. <laughs> but they're the stereotype of the kitten, in the sense that they don't show any form of affection unless they want food. <laughs> Ours, I think, ended up with a little bit of separation anxiety. Um, yeah, they were rescued. They were um, found outdoors. So possibility of uh, parental separation issues or well, maternal separation stuff. And then they got used to living in one place and then moved in with us. So even though things have been stable at different points, I can sort of see, they, they don't get loud about it. They get really sad about it um, when they see things like uh, me getting a suitcase out for heading out of town. They've learned that that means that I'm going away for a bit and like I said, it's not, it's not the over the top, like super intense, anxious stuff, but it's just, I make sure to give them extra cuddles before and after I leave town. And Hunter, you've actually never even heard of this game. So, this game is awesome. It was, uh, it's an indie title that was funded through Kickstarter and we've been uh, having a great time with it, honestly. Um, it's a 3D platformer, so in a lot of ways meant to be meant to evoke some nostalgia on that front, um, but more updated, better, more friendly controls than I hear a lot of 3D platformers have. Um, I still run afoul of them sometimes, but my, yeah, I don't have as much experience with uh, things like, I'm trying to think of some good examples, like Spyro or uh, Crash Bandicoot or things like that. Uh, you know, things like Sly Cooper and whatnot. Nope. Um, I think those all work genre-wise. I'm so bad. But, uh, it is, it is a trip. And I highly recommend it. The DLC was released, uh, I'm trying to think how long ago. I want to say in, like, April last year? No. No, that's wrong. October ish and uh of last year and uh they provide <laughs> sorry for the spam no 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 you're good um one of the cool things that they did was that the dlc was provided to kickstarter backers no problem but also the day that it released so in the first like 24 hours it was officially released if you had the base game already you could download it and uh have it for free. So my buddy Air Caves was like nagging me and reminding me to help make sure that I remembered to do it. And I did. And I'm glad. September maybe? I'm trying to think of when the heck. In any case, I think we're about ready to, excuse me, launch in. Notably, the, the disclaimer that I will give is the platforming is fun and friendly for much of the game and then the DLC hits. Um, I like, I, I got to the point of feeling rather competent and confident with the platforming, and then last week happened. <laughs> we started uh, just checking out the very start of the DLC. Um, do I hear a dingus? I think I heard a dingus. Either that or a cat closing themselves in the bathroom, which they will alert me of shortly. <laughs> but no. So we started scoping out just the very start of uh, the one of the DLC areas.
and I'm excited to keep going, even though I ended up so salty. <laughs> okay. So, Bon Voyage. So this is, is, as far as I know, half of the DLC, basically, um, is this area. So this is, would be the seal aspect of it. We ended up talking to a whole bunch of the, the, the folks hanging out around here, including the penguins and, oh heck, I want, oh yeah. Our hats give us superpowers. I have a little dinosaur hood one. That's a time stop hat. That's a... The, the, I'm blanking on the name of the hat. Basically a ghost thing. Um, this is... The icy one. Boom, there we go. We have, with a name like a hat in time. True, you would assume it has something to do with hats. Okay. And we have really cute we seals. Dang it, Hunter, thank you so much. What the heck? Well, to keep with the Arctic theme, I... Kitty, kitty be one melt. <laughs> oh, heck. That is definitely a stage. So... You detected a kit. Yeah. Somewhere. Okay. I think that Justify might be body checking his office door. So, there's a rift that I know of on the little boat there. But that's part of what I got salty over. So what we're going to do really quickly is try to finish the first chunk of this. Or, like, open up access on the first part of this. And... Whee! Yeah, they're definitely getting into... They're definitely getting into more advanced platforming stuff here. Oh. Heck. Oh, they're doing the thing again. Oh, heck. Oh, heck. Oh my god. Super Mario Sunshine is another one that's been brought up uh, when folks have been talking about this. This is your captain speaking. Is, is this thing turned on? <laughs> All passengers, please check in at the lobby desk. I'll be on board shortly. Oh hey, it's this dude. That is all I can sell. Oh. He's the, the shop guy, except we've already bought everything we can buy from him. Boom. So, the, the shiny green things are currency. 
except I've kind of gotten a whole bunch of stuff. token. Sweet! Rift tokens are awesome. We use them to get more like hats and stuff. to get the boss to tell us about his next movie before we left, but he's tight beaked about it. DJ Grooves has the best eyebrows. It's the dude that he's referring to as the boss. <gasps> the seals are still just too damn cute. So they're directing us over there. <gasps> I just bonked the seal. No, the art style is fantastic. It's so cute. Oh! I'm having a cute attack. The seals really are adorable. I am waiting for things to go like terribly wrong somehow. Talking about kid, the pool temperature is fine to me. <laughs> gosh. We can get a watermelon one. I'm... <laughs> okay. I... I'm done. And the slide there. Oh my gosh. We can... Oh my gosh. I... have no idea what to even say. It's okay. Everything looks cute and fluffy and adorable and 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 and, 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 and like squeaky toys. It's going to kick our teeth in. <laughs> I appreciate his comment. We serve fish. Uh, we we have them as passengers. Just just try not to think about it too much, right? This is just fun. I'm using controller for this as well. Um, I like the camera control af afforded by... Uh, oh, that's a rift token. Afforded by uh, using mouse and keyboard better. But I struggle enough with WASD controls on so many other games that I've been playing on controller. I'm just really bad with things like uh, typing and uh, keeping track of where I am on a keyboard. It's a personal failing. Same. Yeah. It is... <gasps> oh! Got it! We got the shiny! I... I thought I had spaghetti this. <gasps> this is a diving board! <laughs> oh. 
Okay. Yeah. Boom. I love the, the lunges that you could do. So there's the dives. Ah, uh, you get by, by tricking your brain by just doing it blind. Uh, if I move my hands for any reason, then I'll end up on, like, ESDF instead. <laughs> And then wonder why Please I'm dying. Set, miss. It's a big dwarf past his wailing. They're too cute. Also, I trust nothing. Ah, these annoying little seals are driving me mad. At least <laughs> you. Rude child, have the good grace to keep quiet. <laughs> As you should. Trust leads to death in games that act cute. I, seriously. I... Just in the little bit of the DLC that I did last week, or attempted. Was it last week? No, it was the week prior, I think. Um, Just in that little bit, I, uh recognized how it I didn't even hit the difficulty spike is the big thing like I'm being told that it is still to come hello miss we hope you like the ship we work very hard to keep it clean and tidy I can't get over how they speak Oh, no, 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 no. Okay. I didn't mean to fall quite this far. <gasps> this is such a cute garden. Mafia used to shipping containers and fish, not luxury cabins. Tickets <laughs> definitely worth entire life savings. Oh boy. Yeah, something's gonna go terribly wrong. And the problem is, I don't know whether I think it's gonna be that it, like, the seals are part of some terrible conspiracy, or whether they're just gonna be victims. Anything to listen to before I left. And there's no Wi-Fi signal out here. Okay. So we can't the communicate worst. with the shore. Got it. <laughs> Oh no, are we on the Titanic? We're on the Titanic, aren't we? And luggage is stopping us from going this way. The reception is this way, miss. Oh my gosh. possibly go wrong. These are probably going to damage us if they hit us. <gasps> the paw prints! So one of the things that they do in this game to tell you you can run up a wall is they put uh, footprints on it. But those are paw prints! Oh my gosh. Yep, BRB brain is uh, toast. I think it would be the technical term. Oh, there's a map. Okay. 
I'm loving every detail about this. Okay, so that's how we get to there, or at least how we're supposed to. I'm, I'm losing my mind. There's too much cute. It's gonna get so deadly. Attention passengers and crew. The ship is now leaving. Please try not to fall off. There's a shiny upstairs. You can see it clipping through the floor a little bit at the uh, left side of the hall, on the ceiling. You don't like the overcrew? <gasps> There's paw prints on the, the, the... I don't know if that's a paw print, actually. <laughs> okay. We're doing everything except what we're supposed to. I hope everyone's okay with this. This is the only bathroom on this thing. There has to be another way in. Oh, I'm getting desperate over here, kid. Zoe, I crashed the food court and spilled the drinks, so the bathroom is closed right now. For what it's worth, I know. Th so, so Hunter. Generally, for blind runs, especially like puzzle games, we're a lot stricter on this. Um, Hat and time, I'm, a, I'm, I'm less strict on. Uh, that said, I appreciate that you're trying to mind it some, and You're trying not to run into spoiler territory or, like, speculation territory, and I appreciate that. Whoa. Oh, hi. So that's, so that's a shortcut. Whoa. It's not a shortcut. Well, it's a one-way shortcut. Yep. I bonk. So you have to go back around. Again. This very hard to reach up these counters. Maybe we should have gotten some smaller ones. Oh my gosh. Things are on fire. Oh. Oops. Okay. Hello! I'm on a break. You do have to go in a few minutes, need to download some new Shadowrun books, see if there's anything interesting in them. Gotcha! I know I need to finish making my character for, uh... I need to finish making my character for Saturday. He's gonna be fun. Um... So... He's an elf. Except for reasons basically uh, gets taken in by his orc grandmother and uh, definitely street smart also way too charismatic for his own good even though he's ugly as sin um, some of the elves have been known to remark that he sure fits in with the uh, orcs <laughs> he also may or may not be uh, local like orc FM style uh radio host also may or may not basically be a spirit medium except legit you don't want to know about how uh trying to get the water spirit to move out of Susie's uh toilet last week was he's not an orc poser that's the hilarious part 
I contemplated that. He doesn't go out of his way to look that way. He does not. He happen. <laughs> He's basically the ugliest goddamn elf you've ever run into. Uh, also blind. But, uh... Nah, his big thing is, uh... He's an aspected magician focusing on, uh, conjuration. Except the only thing he does is spirits. <laughs> he's really good at, you know, calling up spirits, summoning them. He's really great, you know, really good at banishing them. <laughs> he's really good at binding them in, if need be. <laughs> Meanwhile, you're pinching some art off Dragon Age for your elf. A big thing is basically that so, so when I looked at the orc poser stuff in uh, Shadowrun, a lot of it seems to center around trying to to modify oneself to fit in, sorts of things, or or going out of your way to adopt the culture. I think of it as kind of like, uh, oh gosh, the the stoner like white guys that wind up listening to Bob Marley, and next thing you know, have you know, they're they're going for dreads and things like that. Along with, well, you can't actually do summoning because of your magical tradition. Chose it near enough specifically for that purpose. I got gotcha. you. <laughs> nah. My guy, basically... The other thing is, so, so being blind and trying to navigate in a city, right? The thing is, he he's known in the underground, in the orc underground. And he's also, you know, he... He know, he's known there, and he also just knows a lot of folks. So, there's a... I'm not going to give it all away, but he has a very particular way of navigating that I think is going to be fun. <laughs> so, you're assuming that he mostly makes use of astral perception to see? I, somewhat. He's more likely to rely on the spirits around him. In fact, he's got a little spirit that, uh, <laughs> who, he, who he gave the nickname Eyes, who helps him out with stuff. Um, no, it's good, good luck getting the guy to shut up is part of the idea. He, he's got the golden voice. He, he really is at home in the underground and he jokes somewhat truthfully that uh, one of the reasons they, uh, well, besides the golden voice, they had to hire him at the radio station because he knows what he's talking about and, uh, well, you know how folks can be. Not really friendly to orcs or trolls. So, uh, being able to hire someone from the underground who, uh, who isn't an orc. It just turns out they liked. Yep. No, he's he's evolved some since I first conceived of the character, but I really like where he's gone. Um, nah, he's he's fun. Also has a, has this almost supernatural talent for he can get scuffed up, trip trip over something, get run over by a you know car or a herd of people, practically, and. Sure, it's not like the duds he was wearing were uh, great in the first place. But somehow they always look just fine. <laughs> the trick is, uh, his Sunday best is, uh, well... So this is some of the upper echelons of society wouldn't exactly smile upon it, but, uh... <laughs> at that point, he'd probably just you know, look in your direction and say, I can't see what the problem is. I've got my okay suit on. And if anyone asks why he calls it his okay suit, well, he's not exactly in a position to comment on what it looks like, but it feels pretty okay. <laughs> nah, he's fun. <laughs> nah, I've, I've had a lot of fun as he's evolved. I'm still hashing out the details. I, I have figured out nothing on the the money expenditures yet, 
but I think I finally have my qualities nailed down. His stats are set. His, uh, whole bunch of other stuff is set. I just need to basically set him up with the spirits and then see, uh, what else we can subsist on. Oh, he does also have gremlins. He's also really not good with tech. Like, really not good with tech. <laughs> His approach to this problem, by the way, is to not own a comlink. Is to not own a lot of these aspects of tech. He figures it saves everyone the trouble. If you need him, yell for him. <laughs> <laughs> and odds are if you're if you're working a job you're either in the same room with him or and, and he's gonna know what's up anyways <laughs> or um you don't want to be anywhere near where he is because he just summoned a bunch of spirits and uh true that is a good point you can always pick him in the astral realm but nah, he's... I think he's gonna be really fun to play. <laughs> I just hope that I have the chutzpah to live up to the character that I'm seeing in my head. That's always part of the trouble. Although it's also... <laughs> we learned in a... in It was a campaign in college where I ended up playing... A, uh, it was a Pathfinder campaign. I played a Kitsune monk who was mute. But the problem is, and who had like no charisma. The problem is that I have a, I, it is essentially impossible for me thus far to play a character who has low charisma. I can't use it as a dump stat. <laughs> At least if I'm gonna inhabit and roleplay the character. But, oops. Nah. It's also funny, though, because part of me, you know, I end up with the handle Kitty Bard because of a half cat, half fairy dragon bard that I played earlier in said Pathfinder campaign. Um, little black cat with butterfly wings and euphoria breath auditioning to be an envoy for the goddess Desna and was given, you know, literally drowned in a river and got eight more lives to, you know, do some good in the world. Let's see if I like it. <laughs> Um, but it's funny because if I had not played the kitty bard first, because my party mates could, they they didn't bother keeping track of his name. They just called him the kitty bard, and I liked it as a handle. But if I had played the characters in a different order, I might have ended up with my handle being the foxy monk. <laughs> you looking forward to the campaign as well? You do have to bugger off now, but you've enjoyed sitting in for a bit of the stream. Aww. It's a pleasure having you come by. Yeah. <laughs> do your thing. Do all the things. And let's see, Saturday? I think it's Saturday. Now, yeah. see you then. There's a relevant quote. This is, this is, oh God. I just realized I'm like overexposed to, to hell and back. Um, hold on. I manually control my uh, exposure in OBS. Giggity. So that should work for the moment. I'll have to change it again later. But that should do for now. Now, I'm suddenly reminded with Fio's really hot of a certain lava is hot moment. Way back around when I started streaming. I want to say that was that was in the first couple episodes of La Mulana. The first one, which was uh, my first like series, really. Ooh. 
So they're indicating lots of wall work. Oh god! Carts are trying to kill me. Like, very actively trying to kill me. <gasps> These towers are very comfy. Oh my gosh. I'm supposed to be working, but it's so nice. To be fair, you get a properly, like, fluffy and cuddly um, towel, and it is so nice. I don't know whether I prefer a fresh towel or... Uh, like, freshly cleaned sheets. I know what the answer is. So, so, one of the best feelings in the world. And I understand that, statistically speaking, I'm probably talking to guys, and, uh... <laughs> you probably want nothing to do with this. But one of the single best, like, physical sensations to me is... After having freshly waxed my legs, uh... Even my druthers, I wax rather than uh, shave, but that also requires having someone around who is willing and able to help rip my hair out. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I haven't regularly uh, waxed since... since, like, high school. But, uh... Freshly waxed legs. And then you take a shower. You make sure that you have all the wax residue and stuff off. And but before you got waxed, you, you, you changed the sheets on the bed. And then you crawl in at night, and it is sublime. The feeling of freshly laundered linens on freshly waxed legs is divine. It's this incredibly cool sensation. Um... I don't know, like, I have no experience with things like, uh, you know, facial hair, etc., to be able to say if this would be at all analogous to, you know, the feeling of a particularly close shave sort of things. But I do know that it is, oh, it is cool and crisp. Like, I think... I don't think of a good way of expressing this. Oh! There's a shiny. Okay. So how do I get up there? Up here! Oh, hey. Watch your step there, Spark. <laughs> shocking if you slipped. I'm positive they could make it a little safer down here. He's positive they could make really a little safer. Amp up the cost. It's really amp. Oh, my <laughs> God. Anyway, the nice puns. Down here. Gotta also say, to having all these puns back to back to back to back to back, it really hurts. <laughs> <laughs> Dinsdale, you picked the perfect time to come by. <laughs> oh my god. Yes, that's exactly my sentiment. We got another shiny. There's so many places to explore, and they keep wanting me to check in at the front desk. Uh, it looks like something I blow up. Boom! <laughs> Dudes, you may be revolted, but I'm all charged up for these puns. I appreciate these puns. I appreciate you. Now, how are you doing today? Hopefully I haven't been keeping you too long, uh after the end of the school day. I'm still... I, I know that this DLC is going to kick my teeth in. 
And it's going to be beautiful. Oh. Ah! Oopsie whoopsie! <laughs> Kitty! That is adorable. Oh my gosh, this is... Okay, the seals are absolutely adorable. That gets the Din's seal of approval. Just so long as it does not take the form of a club. They, they, they have a map. Like a holographic map. You're feeling lucky. I'm so lost now and I'm so okay with this. Uh, let's see, that shortcut... Oh, whoops. I did not mean to launch myself all the way down here. Is this a springy? Nope, that's not a springy. It's more a group of like-minded individuals. So they won't let us explore everything yet, which is fine. We haven't checked in, after all. Although we have bought everything that, that they have. Um, apparently I was very thorough in collecting shinies. Okay. So where had I gone previously? Because there was a way that I didn't go. Actually, does this prove sufficient? <gasps> what a surprise. Ugh. Yeah. Well, the scatterbrainedness is uh, exacerbated today because it turns out that I forgot to take my ADHD med earlier. Now, like, th th this is something that I can live through. So, what actually happened is, uh, so, when I visited my doctor the other week, um, I had routine blood work and stuff done, and most of it was fine, but my thyroid levels were slightly low. Like, low enough for him to go, eh, ah, we should really supplement that. So I got put on a medication for that. Which is fine, has like no side effect profile. Actually, if anything, it's it's really friendly because uh, I looked it up afterwards and some of the, the symptoms of low thyroid uh, hormone levels can include things like difficulty losing weight. It can include some depressive symptoms and a whole bunch of other things like that. Now. Realistically, the problem is probably that we stopped using iodized salt and I stopped eating eggs as routinely. Thus reducing my iodine levels and, uh... Thus reducing my iodine levels and... Iodine's really important for thyroid function. It's, uh... In particular, kind of the same way that, like, hemoglobin is, uh... Yeah, that is the red blood cell aspect of your blood, um... Is centered around having iron in it. Iodine is required for uh, thyroid hormone function. So, yeah. But it, but this is a medication that either wants to be taken at least two hours after food or half an hour before you have anything. And shouldn't really be taken with caffeine and things like that. Well, I know myself. If I try to wait until two hours after I eat, one, I graze somewhat throughout the day. Which is one of the ways that I so, sort of account... Or, not counter, uh, counterbalance my uh, the, the appetite suppression effects of things like my ADHD meds. It's sort of just a, a mechanism that I've developed over time to help address that. But so trying to find two hours after I ate, plus the the added bonus of you know everyone jokes about how I don't even know what I had for breakfast. Well. It's less a question of what and more a question of when. Additionally, because uh, one, of, one of the fun facts that I've been citing lately has to deal with uh, basically different body configurations and how things like the presence of a uterus in someone's abdomen uh, <laughs> is correlated with having a narrower uh, cross-sectional area of the large intestine, but also have it about twice as long of a transit time through it. So if we're talking about having medication 
and having to have it be a certain amount of time, you know, before or after food. I'm sort of just leaning towards giving it a little... Just saw your message? I can help with that. Um, but in any case, so... Um, words, things, stuff. So... All these fun factoids and stuff lead up to... I should really make sure that... You know, usually my ADHD med is the first thing I take when I wake up in the morning. It, it means that I don't forget it. I can then, you know, grab something to eat, grab a little bit of caffeine. It's kicking in. You know, I, I'm, I can do this. It helps reduce the probability that I forget my medication on any given day. And I have a particular location that uh, <laughs> gives the stack a side eye. Grazing, whatever do you mean? <laughs> but... Oh. Excuse me. But like, I keep my medications in a particular place in my room even, such that if I'm trying to figure out whether I've taken my med, it's not just a, oh, did I happen to grab this particular bottle from this particular spot? It is a, did I go to this spot at any point thus far today? And so this is a good double check for me, except for the fact that I've been keeping the new medication in the same spot. And then I take one of my like empty pill vials and I put my Vyvans in there and keep that in my pocket for later. Because I figured that give it like half an hour-ish, you know, that's extra incentive to like cook my breakfast and you know, do something like eggs. Because then I don't have to worry about like, oh, hey, has it, has it been enough time? Because by the time I make sure our pan's clean, you know, get everything together, you know, deal with the three rounds of attention deficit, ooh, shiny in between enough time has elapsed. And I have caffeine. <laughs> but the problem that I'm running into, or rather ran into today, and has now alerted me to the fact that there is a problem and now I have a whole new additional set of alarms on my phone because of this, is I forgot to take my main ADHD med. So I time hold myself hard. There were several things that I was supposed to do today, but I did not register the passage of time. I sat down at my computer to play, you know, a round or two of auto chess. And basically next thing I know, my, my, my alarm alerting me to, hey, dingus, you have stream in 20 minutes, went off. Can he be one goldfish? Indeed. Yes. <laughs> um... I've preemptively set a double check alarm for myself now. <laughs> Random. So I time hold myself. <laughs> That's the moment that you popped in, isn't it? Welcome. <laughs> nah, it's 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 getting so engrossed in something that you're doing, whether it's like <laughs> Yeah. Ah, uh, should work. I don't think that, that one added. So give me a sec. And I will make sure that that is added. Because this seems very relevant to my existence and should be immortalized. Boom. It's quote 60. I don't even think that needs context. That one just works so well for me. <laughs> but no, so... No, it, the time holding is... I mentioned this earlier, but... Uh, well, that, that was the, the very... Started the, the stream talk stuff. Um, so, I had a friend in college who introduced me to the term time hole. I'm gonna call... So, so said friend used it in reference to an individual that I'm going to call Joe Schmo. Joe Schmo is a connector and is a consummate nerd. 
yeah, the, the sort of person who's like an electrical engineering student, who's like a TA for four different courses. Uh, he, 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 like, <laughs> knew everyone. Now, now, true, it was a small school. Yeah. You know, for, <laughs> I went to a fairly large high school, but still, three grades worth of my high school is roughly on par with the number of undergrads from my university. I don't know, we'll, we'll add in the ninth grade. So, so four grades worth my district that uh, I grew up in. You know, a pretty populous suburban district is equal to the size of the school. And uh, so you're at most like three degrees of separation for most people. <laughs> That's like generously. If you are the kind of person who holds up in your room and literally never talks to anyone except that one person that you have to talk to for a group project, then maybe you're four degrees of separation away from someone. But Joe Schmo was the kind of person who is a degree of separation for basically anyone. And could have these conversations at length, fascinating, interesting conversations about the world and all the cool things in it, except if you were not actively looking at a clock while speaking to him, you would get time hold. Because it was a legitimately great conversation. Next thing you know, oh crap! <laughs> you know, three hours later, <laughs> or, or heaven forbid, when did it become 3 a.m.? Sitting in the Student Center Forum. <laughs> Random, you should probably actually devote the energy to doing laundry at some point, but that's a lot of work and you're lazy. I understand that feeling. <laughs> did so yeah, Joe Schmo. Met him in the eighth grade. Called him the Schmoster. <laughs> I think that's a schmonsterous name. Random, you're horrible at group projects. At least you're not as bad as Reddit. Be level at group projects, though, yeah. I am very hit or miss on group projects. I'm either... Actually, no, realistically, I am Schrodinger's kitty on uh, group projects. I can... I am simultaneously somehow the best and the worst project mate in the world. When I sit down and churn through things, it, it's basically an exponential takeoff in terms of like my ability to churn through things. But trying to find times that I function well when others do and have availability is a nightmare and a half. <laughs> it's dodging a bullet there, random. And, oh, kitty! It was Pax East! May have mentioned this. At the tabletop area, I got a game that's right up your alley! <laughs> alley cat. Anyway! <laughs> I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Drum rolls going, waiting for the next chunk of this. It's probably just this game that's kitty themed. <gasps> yes! Hi, kitten. Speak of the devil. They may or may not have been yelling at me today. Usually that's enough to pull me out of a time hole. It wasn't in this case. On the other hand, I can give a great review of, uh, I can give a great review of, uh, the, the QIHL third party, uh, matchmaking, uh, website for Dota Auto Chess. <laughs> so Schrodinger's box is the centerpiece. There are scientists like Albert Einstein. I need this. I just realized I have a little window over here that should have been closed. Oh my gosh, though. Mary Puri? Puri, rather? Oh my gosh. Etc. Oh my gosh. I need this in my life. I need this in my life. Random, sounds like your productivity levels. You're either actually good at getting shit done or you're the worst procrastinator even with zero commitment to anything. One of the big problems for me is that my drive to get things done, I got so used to everything being on fire, 
like metaphorically speaking, and just being in emergency crisis mode constantly, that that's kind of where I have to be to, to kick myself into high gear. Now, once I get moving, once I overcome my inertia, then we're talking. I can churn through things, do all kinds of things. But, uh, not to be cheesy and quote a song, but I really am my own worst enemy. <laughs> Hashtag just chatting. <laughs> yeah. Hey, I'm working on it. We've moved. Movement has happened in game. So we're doing better than usual, right? Displacement of Avatar. <laughs> so Brandon, the research paper you were supposed to do for English class is an excellent example of that. Oh dear. I... So... I wouldn't wait until like zeroth hour. The thing that I would always do with papers is read up on them and, and like internalize everything. <laughs> Was supposed to do. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, that sounds like the latter case. See, for me, when, when I refer to like rolling my face across a keyboard to produce something, um, it's basically, I'll be reading up on a topic, say women's suffrage movement, say, uh, you know, AIDS, ep you know, the, the evolution of the early days of the AIDS epidemic for, you know, history course, etc., etc. I'll read up on all that stuff and, like, find all my sources and have it all up here. And then I'll roll my face across the keyboard and, 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 and produce a semi-final draft. And by semi-final draft, I mean that my citations say this, you know, that one thingy goes here. And then I just go track them down, which is, you know, I, it's funny because I've joked about conversational forensics before and how with the way I go off on tangents and ricochet around, I've had to learn how to track down where my train of thought was. This has resulted in a particular subset of being able to refine things. I, it's the kind of thing where, say you're given a three by five card for a exam in college, or any exam really, not strictly just college. Say you're given a three by five card, index card, that you can write anything on. Well, I have small handwriting and I use 0.5 millimeter uh, pencil lead, whereas most people look shocked at me because they use 0.7 and break the leads all the time. I, I, I can write tiny, to the point where it's essentially illegible. So long as the equations are okay, I'm good though. But the point is not whether I can read it at the time. The point is being able to encode so, so I end up remembering, if I'm looking at a question on an exam, I'll remember how full the note card was when I wrote it. And, like, literally, I remember the act of writing it. But that helps me figure it out. And then it gets even greater when I get, am given a full, like, 8.5 by 11 sheet of paper. Because I will get basically the entire unit's worth of material, plus some supplementary things, and happily fit basically a notebook, a, a, a part of a notebook's worth of stuff, just just on that sheet. But I barely even have to refer to it by the time that I get to the exam because I. And it's mostly just to double check that I remember, say, the particular terms in an equation just to double check myself. But those kinds of things, I, I have to be able to track down information using all of the context around it. I may remember a certain, if, if I'm walking, say, laps around, uh, you know, 
where I went to school it was cold enough that they had things like sky bridges between the building, the academic buildings. So if I was doing like back and forth laps along, uh, just walking and hanging out with someone and chatting through academic buildings, there were times where I would like lose a train of thought, get off on a tangent, and then I'd try to remember where I was, and I would remember where we were when we were speaking about it. And that would help give me additional clues. And things like that. Um, when, when it comes to things like books, what did the book feel like? Not just like what did the cover look like, but things like the, the, the particular typeface used can be distinctive to me. And at that point, it's just, you know, oh, I read this here. So thing goes here, track it down later. <sighs> On a good day, I made sure that I tabbed things that I might like. On a bad day, I track them down anyways. But rolling my face across the keyboard is basically my way of saying, take all the working knowledge and stuff that is, that is kicking around up here and just spew it at a page. And when I'm putting in the the quotes and stuff and the citations is when I, uh, it is also when I'm editing language. And then it's a final draft. I don't know. It's probably not the best way to do things and if I were to do something like, say, a dissertation, I would absolutely have to use more robust methods for getting myself to work on it and, and keeping track of things, especially over an extended period of time, because one of the things that is a huge issue for me is the, the time scale I'm working on. Is it something that I was working with this week? This month? You, know, you start getting too far of a horizon out and literally there's just so much stuff I have to keep track of that it stops being the, the active working part. Random, you were supposed to write a research paper for English over a subject. It was admitted to the super boring and didn't really help. You had plenty of time to do it. You were just lazy, non-commitment scrub lord who didn't do it or anything else really. <laughs> yeah. I think I've talked some on stream about the term paper that never happened and the terrible teacher associated with it. I don't, I'm not up to telling that story today. But, uh, I'll have to see if I can remember what day that was. I could probably actually find it based upon a Twitter thread that I posted. <sighs> Doing reports kind of stuff. Okay, 20 students to go. You can do it, Dins. Do the thing, do the thing. Mark the stuff! Mark the stuff! Submit the grades! Submit the grades! <laughs> Random. Sky bridges would have been cool. Not that it gets that cold here, though. You really need to not be a lazy scrub next semester. One of the big things... <laughs> Dance! Goal, finish before you're locked in the building. That's a good goal! Red, speaking of horizons, did you hear that a black hole got photographed? Yes! And immediately I saw all sorts of folks making... I have not been on Twitter since uh, seeing that. I picked up on Discord earlier today um, in another server, but... Uh... <laughs> Everyone immediately making jokes about things like Dark Souls um, and... and... The Eye of Sauron, Lord of the Rings, and all sorts of things. <laughs> Dins, you learned about it from XKCD. To be fair, that's a pretty good place to pick things up from. Okay, I need to probably actually do things. We're checking in. You're all checked in. Now to track down that timepiece. Hi, how can I help you? Help you? Oh my gosh. Are links allowed? They should be. At minimum, I will be able to see it and can display it. You give me a moment, uh, 
we can actually hold up. We're gonna shamelessly make use of another scene. Come on, do the thing. Here we go. Um, that guy out of the way. <laughs> So yeah, freaking awesome. <laughs> so the one from last Friday confused you until today. Ah. Oh, oh. Hold up. Pulling up. This again. Linked up our observations. Got everything aligned, and there it was. First image of a black hole. Can you share the picture? Well, here's the thing. Turns out our telescope feed is like Pinterest, where you can't right-click to save an image. So we tried to take a screenshot, but the key combination kept turning off the display instead. I grabbed my phone and tried to take a picture of the screen, but I was too slow. The observation is had ended. We're planning to try again next year. We'll definitely record the screen this time. Oh. <laughs> Heck. <laughs> so, I have this... I, I have this source, the, the Ditto Chew, set up to toggle off one of my mouse buttons. The thing is that it is... It, the, the, when it's on the... Uh, when it's on the witness uh, one, which is the, the scene I was just making use of, it to it's the opposite of when the other two scenes are toggled because of just I wasn't paying attention when I put things together, basically. So one of these days I'm going to have to unbind a hotkey or like bind it to something else, toggle it, and then <laughs> rebind everything back to this key. So until then, we get random Ditto Chew and Pharaoh problems. Not that that's a problem. <laughs> Albert Feinstein is vindicated. Heck plus. Yeah. One of these days we will get around. We're going to have to pick something that we know that I'm going to get salty over someday. And then I promise we will have a heck counter. There might even be chunks of this game, uh, the, this DLC, that end up deserving the heck counter. And random. Oh, while you're commenting on your college events or lack thereof, did you ever explain about your history final? You mentioned it in passing. I don't think that you've explained it fully. Either that or I am a goddamn goldfish. There's two kittens over there sitting on a box, just looking outside. I have the window cracked a little bit so that they can't, like, they, they've never dealt with screened windows before, so I'm trying to introduce them gradually so we don't have, you know, kittens tumbling out the window or busting through the um, screen and things like that. But they're, uh, they've been having a lot of fun with this. Excuse me. There's a thing somewhere. <gasps> oh. Uh-oh. Oh, I remember. We broke one of those and hid it from the captain. He wouldn't be very happy if he knew we made a mess. <laughs> I'm trying to parse the last two words of what you just posted, Dins. Is it I am the goddamn goldfish? Or is I am the goddamn goldfish? The kitty version of I am the. Quitza. Hadarak? Kitza? Kitzap? It's a dune thing. Okay! <laughs> <laughs> I have read Dune. I don't remember it well. My mom got annoyed with me reading sci-fi 
and fantasy stuff that mostly had to do with things like, oh, dragons and stuff like that. And my generally favoring fantasy overall and wanted me to be introduced to some uh, classic, like, good sci-fi. And... Partly because she was bugging me about it, I, I did not have a very positive experience with Dune. I would have to read it again, like, I'd have to, on a whim, read it again and freely engage in it. <sighs> Excuse me. <laughs> Din's lurky lurky. <laughs> no problem. Random. Will you long? term memory works best on tangents, so you get that anyway. Your history teacher wanted you to read all the lecture notes and answer a bunch of questions before you got to class so that she could just skim over things in an annoying fashion, but luckily you can get away not doing either of those things, because memory. Oh boy. We tried to clean it up, but, um, hmm. Yeah? We didn't a very good job, and we lost some of the pieces. I'm very sorry, miss. Please don't be upset. They broke a timepiece. Hello there, fellow passenger. It is nice to meet you for the first time. <laughs> we crows all won our tickets in a sweepstakes. All of us. It was incredibly lucky. You must have bought yours legitimately. For purely casual reasons, how many pawns did you pay? He wants to know how many shinies we paid. So... The answer that immediately comes to mind talked about how I process Greek letters before. I know the entire Greek alphabet, upper and lowercase. I learned most of it in the course of assorted classes and applications and learned the rest when I was pledging uh, to a certain service uh, fraternal organization. The, the, the big thing, though, is uh, I used the lowercase to help me remember some of the uppercase. They only wanted you to learn the uppercase, but I relied on the lowercase to help me with the uppercase in a lot of ways. So, in any case, one of the big things, though, is that they all have sort of names to me. Like, uh, lowercase Xi will forever be the Kemi Squiggle of Doom to me. Um, partly because that's where I encountered it with respect to extent of reaction um, solving. But I have different, like, you, you look at a letter, right? And you process it as, say, P or A or V, you know, whatever. But I have additional, like, distinctions and stuff. So, in, and partly for fluidity of mental thought. So, for example, having to sit there and think lowercase omega is just tedious and is not conducive to fluid thought processes. So internally, that's wub to me. Like W U B would 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 be perfectly at home in like an EDM setting, whatever. I will catch up on this. I'm seeing a multi-part story and I am waiting with bated breath to make sure that we've got as much of it as we can get it a shot. Random Ooh. Excuse me. So, so we get things like you know, the Kemi Squiggle of Doom, which I think my internal. I want to say that I went with Eeks for that. Uh, but you have things like lowercase omega is wub. Um, lowercase beta would be bed. 
Um, yeah, things like that. Uh, lowercase gamma. I don't remember what I called. That was ye. Like Y-E-E. -E. <laughs> but um, this is how I process them internally. For the sake of fluidity of language. The thing is, lowercase alpha is fish. Which has, it, it has led to some interesting situations. For example, me actually describing something and like working on a board or something and, and, and talking through what I'm writing and having two plus two equals fish. Which if I'm tired enough, I will articulate as such. It's not just a like two plus two equals five, huh? Mathematicians can't you know, do basic arithmetic slash, you know, a joke about a significant figures and things like that, uh, cause, you know, 2 plus 2 equals 5 for some values of, uh, 2. No, it's 2 plus 2 equals fish. Something that I've actually uttered. Now, it won't let me put lowercase alpha, but I can say fish. So random, her class was actually pretty easy cause she was a pretty solid teacher. If I dislike she was actually a pretty solid teacher, if I disliked her somewhat skimmy ideals. The only assignments we had were the tests, which was also nice. The tests were a combination of both multiple choice and essay, and this wasn't a problem until the final. We were supposed to do a research paper over some one during over someone during that it had an impact or something that we hadn't covered in class. I didn't really want to do that because research papers are boring, so I didn't, and somehow got away with it. The real annoying part was the multiple choice bit, which she straight up didn't cover the second half of the test in class. So basically, I just had to extrapolate on half known information you sort of remember from that time frame in order to answer the questions she didn't actually teach. In AP Bio, my AP Bio teacher was awesome in high school. She, uh,. She really taught things well, and it was fantastic. But, uh, she also had, like, a... She, she had studied infectious disease with the army or something crazy like that for most of her life. Had all these crazy stories. Um, you, the, the sort of person who used to have an extra credit project of, uh, bringing in a piece of roadkill and, uh, they'll taxidermy it. And, and that, that was an extra credit project <laughs> before, you know issues um <laughs> but uh for the ap bio exam though there was a significant chunk of material that we were not able to cover like in in the scope of the class just due to time a whole lot of disruptions and things like that in the schedule so those of us that were taking the ap bio exam ended up in a study group basically and yeah during class time we would be studying and going over material for the AP Bio exam. And that was fun. We ended up doing really well. Um, AP exams are on basically a one through five scale where you know one is crap and five is fantastic and will generally get you college credit for at least one course. Um, three of us got fives, one of us got a four and the other got a three. Which is pretty big. Um, <laughs> that was worth 10 college credits, by the way. <laughs> because uh, two, three credit, um, 100 level bio classes and their labs, that was worth. It was huge. But, uh, and when you start thinking of it as substituting in for that, it starts making more sense that you didn't cover everything because it's basically two courses worth of material as it would be taught in a college setting, so. But uh, that, that's the good side of having a teacher that doesn't end up teaching everything in the class. Um, but that's partly just because I had really positive experiences with it. And then, on the other hand, there was a chemi professor who promised us that a certain piece of, you know, the certain kind of problem wasn't going to be on our final for a given class, for phase equilibria. 
It's an open book exam. Closed note. Which is infuriating, and by the way, if you're gonna give me an open book exam, give me an open note exam as well. Like, or give me like a sheet of paper. Something that I can put together a friendly tabulated reference for myself. Especially since, well, chemi textbooks are generally bad, or at least the ones I was exposed to are bad. Like, textbooks can be dense and awful and hard to work through and not particularly useful, and then there's the chemi books I got exposed to. They somehow hit a whole new level of just not helpful. But so... <sighs> Excuse me. He, uh, he swore that, yeah, this wasn't going to be on the final. It was something that was taught in the last half of the last day of lecture prior to exam review. Guess what 25% of the final was? One of those questions. We hadn't even had homework on this kind of question. Yeah. My rule of thumb with that professor became, because it's a small school and you're going to have the same professor multiple times if you know they're, they're a professor in the department you're majoring in. My rule of thumb became if he swore that it wasn't going to be on the final, it was absolutely going to be on the final. The other two times I had courses with him, this proved correct. <laughs> it was so consistent, I would almost say that it's like them making some commentary about how, you know, you won't always know what's expected of you. You have to just be able to deal with crap because that's exactly the kind of BS lesson that the chemi professors seemed intent on trying to beat into our heads rather than focusing on, say, you know, making sure that we have a friendly opportunity to learn our framework for things so that we're not up shit creek when we have to do material that depends on this. Little things, right? Nah. Somehow, like, even just thinking about that one final, I'm getting salty about it. Just, just reflecting on it. That's the kind of stuff that I got used to as a chemi student at the school I went to. Like, I really, it's not a joke when I joke that clinical depressive anxiety and or substance abuse issues were a prerequisite for your diploma if you were studying chemi. It was... I watched a bunch of folks have nervous breakdowns. It was not... You, you see kids who are generally well-adjusted, generally okay going in, and just nervous wrecks coming out. I know that, you know, going to school in an area further north than where I currently am now meant, you know, reduced light levels in the winter. It's very it's very overcast a lot of the time, so you don't get much direct sunlight and all that jazz, but that 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 alone does not account for the magnitude of the effects. Something that was particularly telling to me was when I changed majors. when I changed majors to math, like, I, I had noticed for a while that the math students seemed happier. It's not why I changed. It's because I was having fun with math and it had become my fun courses. Somehow. <laughs> I went from, you know, starting off college thinking that I was pretty bad at math to, no, I'm actually pretty good at it. Especially certain subsets of it. But... Yeah, the kids 
studying math might be kind of stressed. And yeah, it was basically, if you were studying math theory, you were probably looking at grad school stuff and stressing out about that. And if you were applied, you were probably stressing about, like, trying to make sure that you wind up uh, working at something, you know, working something other than data entry following graduation. But, and if you were one of the, the folks who was also studying physics, then you were probably worried about playing around with lasers and things like that, and uh, also th thinking grad school. And, and the big question of, are you thinking education or, yeah, are you thinking education and teaching or not education and teaching? But somehow those questions, <laughs> but not arithmetic <laughs> regarding uh, being pretty good at math. True, fair, you got me there. Ugh. It was stunning to me though, being in classes with folks who weren't constantly, like having the peers that I was exposed to most not be in the middle of a nervous breakdown. Like, the way that the chemical engineering department and curriculum and environment is handled at the university I attended. I now recognize that some of the things that I was identifying as like mood disorders or anxiety issues and stuff coming out of it are more just trauma. They somehow managed to produce such a systemically traumatic learning environment. And sure, engineering is hard. Like, it is and it isn't, but it, we'll, we'll go with the assertion that it's hard. But... You talk to the Mechies, and sure, they were also stressed out. But, like... They could exist a little? Heck, the only folks that I knew who were more stressed, possibly, than the chemis were the computer engineers. And no, I don't mean the software engineers. The, the computer engineers, the hardware folks. Because they basically had to do a whole bunch of electrical engineering and... Uh, computer science and software engineering sorts of things. <laughs> Dins, the only reason you're decent at arithmetic is because your math degree is a BA! Hey! That's alright, mine is totally BS. <laughs> so you're gonna have to finish at home, you think you're close to being locked out? Yeah, don't, don't get locked out. <laughs> See you at home. I promise I won't just be chatting by the time you're done your commute. Or er, locked in. Okay, I got what you meant. Bye, go, get the heck out, run away. Make sure you, know, <laughs> you spend enough time at work, you don't need to get locked in. <laughs> and circling back, um, random noting, I know that this was quite a bit ago, but, uh, well, it might be a good idea in being ready and, um, you know, ready and able to handle things that, uh, you didn't expect to have to be able to handle, as I was talking about earlier. Um, blatantly lying to your students is a serious dick move. I agree. <laughs> Random, maybe set the building on fire so you don't have to have that again. <laughs> nah, it's... This actually does bring me back to something that I was going to comment on random. Um, if, if you're having trouble getting yourself uh, in gear with things like uh, your academic work and things in college. Honestly, finding non-living spaces that you work well in is probably the single biggest thing I'd recommend. 
Now that can also mean like literally if, if you're in like a townhouse or something, there were townhouse apartments on my campus. Um, you know, you work at the table downstairs instead of, you know, in your room. But literally, see if there's places that you work well. Or if there's certain patterns that help you work well, aside from, you know, possibly the, the, the anvil sitting over your head of, oh dear god, I have to do the things! But... <sighs> no, it's basically get creative. One of the I know that it's something that I've learned had to learn how to do, partly because uh, the way I sometimes describe dealing with my own brain is basically like I'm constantly playing chess against myself. I'm constantly having to, you know, in some ways outsmart myself and in particular the part of me that's like I don't want to do things I just want to goof off I like the shiny things it's 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 and using everything at my disposal including environmental triggers as well as yeah you know, things like audio cues and stuff like that um, exposure to natural light is a huge one but finding yeah, it's, it's the sort of thing that you think on over a break. What kinds of things seem to be correlated with doing your work? Uh, when you should. I don't just mean the, the work that's interesting, but just in general. Now, it, it's... If you can find ways to make your workspaces and your not workspaces more distinct I know th this is another sign of privilege for me. Uh, one of the things that I got at one point in college was a was a tablet. It was like a budget tablet, good enough to run like Windows. It it, it had Windows on it, but uh, yeah, it could run you know, word processing and Excel and some things like that. Maybe not Excel too happily. Had a little uh, keyboard that. Uh, it clamshelled with. I got that partly to be a dedicated mobile work device. Now, eventually I started doing things like playing Hearthstone on it or uh, playing uh, randomized versions of uh, Pokemon games. However, it still was... Uh, the, the, the big thing is that I had that with me in certain spaces. Now, the problem with a budget tablet is that uh, you can't service it, like, at all. And the charging port went bad. I am thankful that I was, you know, that this was not a crisis. I was trying to spare my laptop at the time because uh, Cerberus was getting on in years and not very happy with being carted around. Um... I was trying to keep Cerberus as a stationary rig, but uh, having that with me when I was in other places working on stuff, having particular places that I would go to get work done, at least for me, was a huge boon. I had to, you know, and because it became part of my routine, you know, I went to campus early. You know, early classes or because uh, my then significant other who was not officially living with me but kind of was for a while um, yeah, they had 8am classes so and yeah, making sure or 9am in the case of one semester but making sure that we were on campus early hey welcome on in draw Making sure we were on campus early and able to do things, and because that step was a huge part of it for me, it meant that I, and, and it got easier for me when I lived off campus. Yeah, at like 5 a.m. I could work on stuff in my own apartment. I didn't have internet, by my choice. Uh, it was expensive and crappy up there. 
It was not worth it to me. Especially since I could go to campus to use internet. And if I had to catch something on my phone, then, or to get something while I was, uh, you know, check email or whatnot while I was at my apartment, I had data. And checking email doesn't use much data. Especially since I set up my filtration systems and, and settings such that, like, images weren't being displayed by default. But, uh... That was a big thing for me. Having the partition. Having a distinct, I go to campus to do work. <laughs> Joy, you were about to throw yourself at Arch Temperance Xena repeatedly till you get what you need. The desire sensor, it is real. I realize that we've been sitting here on pause for a little bit effectively. <laughs> Fish seems like a normal price for cruise tickets. Not incongruent with your bank statement at all. <laughs> oh dear. Well, let's look at the thing. Hmm. This damage is serious. Ah, you you now have cereal random. Om nom nom. And yeah, if you tell your students that something won't be on the final, then logically they'd believe you. Mm-hmm. I just learned to never exclude anything from finals. It was funny because when I started taking some of the math classes, if if I could bring in a note page, I had one professor ask me, why did I have, like, we had two sides of an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. I took half of one side dedicated to something that they had explicitly said was not going to be on the exam. And they're like, why? And it basically amounts to, I have trust issues because chemi professors are dicks. <laughs> Draw desire sensors a thing, but let's for a moment throw that out of the picture. One of the things that I find helps me when I'm uh, working on stuff in Monster Hunter is focusing more on learning the fight better than what I get at the end of it. Like, sure, yeah, I check in and go, am I done yet? Am I done yet? Am I done yet? But otherwise, it's just... Let's learn how to do this better. So, mm, this damage is serious. It's in more pieces than one, which is terrible. Maybe you can stick it all back together if you find the missing shards. Looks like there's one in every room. So there's shards all over. So shinies. We have to locate small shinies. There's 11. Where's the map? Where to go? Where to go? There's the map. Oh, they turn green if you have them. And both of your chem professors were actually pretty cool. See, the chem professors are an entirely different deal. Chem professors, I've generally had positive experiences with. So let's go here. And this is still blocked off. You can block past beans, but if he attacks while reloading, draw kill his victim. Yup. Yup. Okay. Oh, that was there. Whoop. Okay. Oh, I saw a shiny. That's a shiny. That's another shiny? Shiny! We got shiny. Also... I really don't want to know what's going on here. Just casual shiny. 
Why? Don't jump, mister! It's nice to take vacation. See people that are not other mafia. Too casual. many of those at home. Casually block plasma beams. Yep. Boom. Okay. Oh! The, the lifeboat's not here anymore. This said not to go in. Where does this even connect to? Oh god, whoops. I did not mean to fall off the thing. There was a shiny upstairs and I need to remember this fact. Basically standing in your food. Oh, hi! Welcome on in, Megas! And random. Speaking of shinies, you started playing Dead Cells again. I need to go back to re and, and revisit Dead Cells. Also, light level's shifting again, so let me really quickly adjust the, the camera exposure. There we go. See? Boom ba doom. Now, nah, how are you doing, Megas? <laughs> Let's see. Do, 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 do. So, draw. Not only can you block plasma beams, it doesn't even move your HP bar. You're ridiculous. It's fantastic, but you're ridiculous. To tell you the truth, it feels good to have someone else cooking for a change. I still love this cat. I get to relax. Did the cat just dab? They apparently released a free DLC recently. Oh, I'm definitely gonna... I'm putting a post-it for myself. My handwriting is terrible, but I did not do the, the terrible non-specific reminder. I did a specific Dead Cells DLC reminder. Megas, you just got home and got your character mostly set up, still need to figure out qualities, what bits of polish you can use from karma, and actual character details. I have the headspace for my character most of the way constructed. I just have to finish getting him, like, down on paper. He's evolved since I, since when I was thinking of having him be the blind orc. He's now a blind elf, who was still raised in the underground and winds up, uh... Not being like an orc poser, but definitely part of the just extended family, basically, um, in the orc underground. Uh, the ugliest elf in the world, though. Like, even before the accident that caused him to go blind, he's ugly as sin for an elf. Which means that he's probably okay looking for a human. <laughs> but he's, uh... Nah, he's, uh... Charismatic. Has a golden voice. Somehow never manages to look disheveled. Like, sure, he doesn't look as put together as some of the, 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 the high, higher brow folks would like. But, uh... Looks oddly put together. Although, if anyone uh, gives him crap, he'll uh, say, I don't see what the issue is. I'm just wearing my okay suit. Why is it his okay suit? Well, it's not exactly like uh, he's in a position to yeah, talk about what it looks like. But it feels pretty okay. So it's his okay suit. <laughs> Random. Might have also made the regular... Uh, new game level easier, because you made it the hand of the king on your first run back on a new save, even though you kept derping all the things up. Also, could also be that you got gooder. That's always a possibility. Draw. Also, you decided to create a second character for D&D that you can swap out with your mystic at some point, so you can see how the group fares without the psionic abilities, and funny thing with that. So... 
trying to remember the D and D order. So it's a uh, strength, dex, con, int, whiz, charisma. Yeah, the thing that I'm catching though is that uh, your character is your new character is pretty much strictly better stats wise. Impressively so, really. And Magus, can he speak orc? Yes, he's fluent in orc. And random, uh, so Magus and I are talking about, um, we're both participating in a Shadowrun campaign that's starting up. So Shadowrun is this basically you know, futuristic cyberpunk dealio. Um, it's ridiculous. Um, excellent setting and flavor and all of that pain in the butt mechanically uh fifth edition seems to be a little bit better though and uh no nah, i uh i am gonna be playing a blind magician a, a blind elvish magician who was raised by his uh orcish grandmother uh in the orc underground so basically in the, the slums the favela of seattle if you will and uh is he's got a golden voice and yeah, not not very like you know book smart very street savvy knows every damn food cart well that's worth visiting uh anywhere near the underground but he's uh he's gonna be a trip it's sort of yeah he he appears on local radio think like you know O-R-K-F-M. So, has to know some music and stuff for that. Also talks about spirit stuff. Because, uh, he is an aspected magician, which means that he, there's one area of magic that he can do. And that's conjuring. So he'll sit there and just wind up talking with the spirits. You know, water spirits, Air spirits, fire spirits, the spirit that's, you know, taking up residence in, uh, <laughs> the landlord's toilet and is causing, uh, mayhem. You know, that sort of deal. Turns out the spirits don't like literally eating shit. <laughs> but he's, uh, nah, he's a character. And I'm gonna have fun with how he's navigating as well, because, uh, you know, blonde guy, big city. Sure, you know, folks know him around the underground and uh, generally seem to like him. But, uh... <laughs> now nah, he... I see a dingus. <laughs> nah, he's, he's gonna be fun, though, is a big thing. Um, he has a trait called gremlins as well. So, he's not gonna have a comm link. He's not going to have anything like that. He can do two things. <laughs> he can talk to people, <laughs> and he can talk to spirits. <laughs> um, if you try having him use tech, it's not going to go well. Like, and heaven forbid you plug him into SimSense anything. Oh dear god, nope, 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 nope. That does not go over well. The way he figures is, uh, if you're on a job, then you're either in the same room as him, in which case, just speak, damn it. Or, you don't want to be in the same room where he is, or he doesn't want to be in the same room where you are. Because he's probably summoning spirits. <laughs> Yet somehow no one ever finds him particularly suspicious. <laughs> or even if they do, it's, it's just not... Dude, I, why is... I'm always in the wrong place at the wrong time. Heck. I mean, yes, I know the, 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 we, you know, fortune is blind and all that jazz, but come on, this is ridiculous. <laughs> can, can, can't a guy have some decent luck for a change? Because heaven knows, it gets exhausting having to talk with people and spirits all the time. Come on, officer. Like, come, I got a show to go do. Or better yet. Did, did you see where the perps went? 
I can't see a damn thing, officer. <laughs> nah. Megus, you're thinking about giving your character a second language to dabble in, but you're not sure what? Megus, you're a monkey man brawler who replaced his arms with metal and loves cars. Oh boy! <laughs> Part of your job is being the team's driver. The other job is the emergency button when things go wrong. <laughs> As long as he's not in the way of the flash grenades. Oh, wait! Yeah, see, not so much an issue. Although, Eyes might uh, have a few things to say to you. Eyes is basically his little spirit buddy who helps, uh, well, act as his eyes. <laughs> so... Draw, your second character's gonna be a wizard, so you got to learn spell slots. All the spell slots! And random spirit stuff reminds you of the one really absurd thing you heard about vampires, the masquerade. What is the really absurd thing you've heard about that? I, I, that's a, that is a game that I have not gotten into. I've known several folks who've played it and very much enjoyed it, including one who's currently doing a blind of it last I checked. Uh, probably talked about him before, or at least greeted him, usually by telling him, oh, nope, stream's over, if he shows up, but uh, Artolo is doing a blind currently. Um, let's see, he's EU, so it winds up being, I think, like, late mornings into afternoons, uh, Eastern US time, is usually when he's doing stuff. But nah. Curse me, but we're doing the pause.stream thing again. I will give folks a heads up. Uh, let me double check the time. I can't go too late today, so maybe an hour more. Um, I know, this has been such a productive stream. <laughs> this is to make up for uh, the, the one week where I just turboed through things. Mafia bit down on something hard in this food. Child should take it back to kitchen, please. Um... Oh no, he ate it. Is this gonna turn into a poop joke? Cause I will be disappointed if it does not. Whee! Ooh. Big aquarium. on the list for dinner. We paid exactly <laughs> pawns for tickets. Just like every other real passenger, there will be a bad review left on this cruise trip. Oh, the, the, the omnipresent threat of bad Yelp reviews. Oh, so there's an elevator. Good to know. So, uh, Oops. we forgot to secure the tables, just riding all over the place. Oh dear, random. So, suppose this one guy had the ability to speak to plants and stuff. He also was a medium, so he could speak to the dead. He needed some evidence for something or other, and he ended up with the idea to interrogate the mashed potatoes. Which somehow actually worked, and he got evidence from the mashed potatoes. You know what? <laughs> Monkey Man knows German. When, before I had shifted my character concept... Oh hey, underneath the lettuce, that's a shard for the timepiece. Fio's really hot! So's lava. The fish in the sock is just... Now, before the character... So, so when the character was gonna be an orc, I determined that the, uh... I determined that he was probably going to know Russian, among other, th among other languages. So thank Naki for that one.
Okay, I'm just poking around here to see if there's any sign of uh, the the shards. Yep, there's one. Something just bumped my foot and was confused. And then wall running. How are we doing? Are we in an area that okay, we are in an area that still has a shard. Okay, that's not a thing. Right, that's where I came from. Got it! Where did I come from? Where did I go? Boom. Is this still closed off? Okay, yep. This is so much fun to just venture through. I still love the paw prints here. About the code name, not the language choice. Ah, gosh, his code name is direct reference to Monster Hunter. There we go. I missed. I missed a line. Okay. I missed a line when I was skimming chat. I I failed a spot check. The paw prints are adorable. Still. Oh no! Hold myself. Will you take me to the captain, please? Um, is it through this door? He looks so cute! I'm busy, pup. The ship doesn't steer its- Oh, so we have to come to this specific what spot. What do you want, pup? One of the crew hurt themselves again? Oh. Right. You're not sure when they changed this, but the necromancy not complete shit. Ooh. <laughs> Kitty I Joe. Yep. Megas' code name is Rajang. I'm probably putting the emphasis on that wrong, aren't I? What do I look like, a doctor? Kiss it better yourself. We have to kiss it to make it better. Thank you for kissing my ouchie, miss. I feel better already. I found a shiny glass, but it's all yours. Okay, that was too cute. We had to kiss it to make it better. Oh my god. I can't even. So, you know, you never hear his name in game. Fair. Um, there we go. What's this way? Oh, hey, do that. I was just chilling, you know, and I noticed you were floundering about. It belongs to you. Oh, cool. I guess. <laughs> no judgment, you know. The seals really are almost painfully adorable. <laughs> Megas. Oh, you never hear the name in game. Okay, fair. Pretty gnarly picking that stuff up with your bare hands, but like whatever floats your boat, you know. Oh, hey, do that. It belongs to it. Mm. Now, this is a great way of introducing you to the ship. There's a casino. I have family in. I am very glad that this is where we are going. You wouldn't call it super good, but it's actually percentage based now, so you don't heal four HP when you have ten uh, K. That's why nice. I got on this cruise, of course. Having it be percentage based is definitely a friendly thing. <laughs> Getting really good vibes from this machine. You need some chips to play though. Oh my gosh. You're feeling lucky. 
There was a shard stuck in the machine. Yep, lucky machine. <laughs> Damn straight I am. I am very much feeling lucky. So... Ballroom, I think, is one area. Too many fumes! Oh my god! Yes. You're feeling lucky. We're gonna. Is that a door? Or is that just a? Okay, that's just a porthole. Looks kind of like a door. <laughs> okay. Trying to, yeah. Thank you. This way to the, uh, I mean, hello. That's a tough habit to shake. Speaking of lucky, you just got a blueprint for the double crossbow matic. Yes. I keep forgetting that if you jump on them, they sound like squeaky toys, until I accidentally jump on one of the seals, and then it's just in like, on the one hand, I feel bad, on the other hand, oh heck. Cuteness overload. go bouncing up here boom please watch your step miss okay yep there's one over there I'm still waiting for this to turn into the Titanic somehow He also reduces your infection level when you kill a boss. So we have to get things and stuff. I have to not break it? Uh oh. Can I bring these back like... On the rocks. Oh, I might the good Kitty, what do the cats say? No, um, bad jokes. Um, <laughs> Megas, egg. And large amounts of tangents. Uh, thanks. There's this seal that only says egg and is cuddling what? Wait. Wait, oh, he, he's asking for a cocktail called a sinking ship on the rocks. Oh, huh. I didn't notice you there, lassie. I roam in our way. If you're after a drink, I think they might have some wee bottles of juice. You're a capable one, sure. 
But what I'm having is knee for young lasses. So he's basically so so the peanuts, right? What's his name? Uh, Woodstock, the, the 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 yellow bird. The conductor's his grumpy uncle. That's that's my assertion. So hold on, there was a oh, wrong hat. Someone cuddling an egg. Just saying egg. Where? Or was it down there? Seal under the shower. Probably failing to navigate. On the rocks is the bar name with stylized icebergs. Yes, yeah, seriously. I've been making Titanic jokes about this, but about this place, but uh it very clearly Yeah, I, I'm not the only one to think of this. Under the shower. I... Heck, this feels like an episode of Blue's Clues. Where? Over there! The whole game is sinking then. Oh, clearly. Wait, I found him! Egg! Egg! <laughs> you made a Titanic joke since you saw the first, or since you first saw the ship. Wow, I can speak today, can't I? And fair, random. Could also be a game of Where's Waldo. You, you, you got that right, uh, Cyber. That said, it's funny because I literally just looked at your handle and I could not quite come up with the word. Egg. I don't know why I'm running into a table. I'm getting distracted by things and like not looking where I'm running. And this this is never a good idea. Egg. <laughs> Always a good idea. You must be this small to enter! Ah! Ah! I don't know if I can handle this cuteness. I, I am also a hobbyist Sith Lord and can shoot lightning bolts. I haven't the faintest clue what any of this means, but the handwriting's surprisingly good for a seal. Conductor's kids. <laughs> this is too precious. I'm thinking of quitting the movie business. Conductor's movies are always just action. Where's the drama? Where's the artistry? At least they aren't referring to Eggman. Then we'd be looking for blue hedgehogs with red sneakers that have an affinity for hot dogs. Maybe I <sighs> work for video games instead. Oh, dear. Oh, boy. I followed some nice new people on Chirper today. I'm sure I won't regret it. Oh, Twitter jokes. I'm just... Fluffers alert! Ah! Make this a fluffers. 
So we hit that button and we go to place. Does the... I'm guessing that this one only goes up and down between those two places. Mafia dude is no longer off on his own. I need a map. They exist in game, so this is not suddenly a mapping stream problem. Although it, it does make me smile a bit that uh, I have to give disclaimers like that. So the bottom layer of the ship. You want to say it was more a Tumblr joke? I don't know. How about social media of choice joke? Why am I going up? Boom. So am I approaching... I am nowhere near the correct level yet. <laughs> oh, whoops. I... Wrong hat. Wrong hat. Wrong hat. It's below me. Heads up. Yep. <laughs> that is so very me. It is painfully me. Boom. And there's a passage through here that might get me more where I'm looking? I don't know, though. Although, this is a room- Aha! I failed a spot check earlier. So I'm the wash cycle without any detergent. Better dunk some in there. Oh, boy. Oh, my gosh. It's basically a giant detergent bomb. They also either removed legendaries or just made them actually rare. You're not sure which. Huh. Cyber. Anyhow. <laughs> you're gonna go on a... You're gonna go on and lurk. You're gonna be taking care of a few real life things and getting something to eat. Ooh. Noms are important. Ah, do what you need to do. It's a pleasure having you come hang out. Mace, by the way, one of the levels in here is straight up hellish. I am not surprised. Oop! There's a timepiece shard in with the clothes. And now the ship sinks. Well, no, because there's consequences of broken timepieces. Right? There's no way that something that interacts with time... Like... <laughs> there's no way that you can get off scot-free... ...in terms of consequences. So this is basically just the first level of this trip. And it's probably going to go crazier. Oh. Yeah, you can just go in the TARDIS. I mean... <laughs> <laughs> yep, Meg is... They inform us that fire is hot. And immediately I could not help but think that when they're talking about fire is hot, lava is hot. Oldies but goodies. <laughs> and you've currently only done one full run on your second currently. Do the thing! That was part one. Ship shape. So first, we're gonna try to revisit something that I tried last 
session and was failing at. You can just go to the terminus, then you can do anything in history with little to no consequences. I mean, it depends. The trick is not to leave so much of a mess that uh, you would have to interact with your own timeline in order to fix it. Are we ready to so we're skipping things along. Because I know exactly where I'm running to. Ow! Ow. Oop. I... okay. Boom! You'd totally do the grandfather paradox. Okay. So, we have a time rift. I tried this last time. Salt levels may have been non-zero. So we're gonna see if a fresh take on this is gonna do us a little better. So, time rifts. We have to gather enough crowns to advance and there's also a bonus objective in the form of uh, pictures. Now, because I'm terrible and my camera, uh, my webcam is placed so well for this aspect of the game. Um, you guys can't see how many pictures we're at. We're at one of nine. I will also have to make sure to keep y'all apprised as to the number of uh, crowns. So like we need two crowns in order to advance. There's another picture. So we're at two. I'm trying to remember what all is where and what I feel like doing first. Don't run into the spiny things. Okay. Boom. 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 We're gonna need the ghost thing. Uh, hold on. I hesitated some, so... Timing is an art that I'm slowly mastering. Uh, Megas, why a grandfather paradox when you can do a bootstrap paradox? Random. Salt may have been more than a gram, with the relevant quote being cited. Oh god, oh god, oh god. Ah! Nope, I did not make it back. Oh. So, uh,. That was just me being bad. Problem is that I don't know where very many hearts are, or rather, they don't really exist as much as would be strictly convenient. So, that's actually a really problematic. Okay. Boom. It's almost like I can be competent sometimes. Oh, nope, I bonked. No! Uh, this is gonna be a thing. Oh, nope, I just whiffed. This is just my refresher course. That's what this is. I jinxed myself, I really did. Yep, this is just my refresher run. <gasps> my bonking skills. <gasps> I thought I was gonna fall on the urchin.
Okay. I have no bonk on, yes. Boom. Okay. Boom. Boom. <sighs> that was kind of reminding you of your Soul Reaver run. Where you were trying to hop platforms and kept missing. Yep. Only the best platforming skills here. That is, uh, certainly a thing. Boom. So we are at four pictures. We have one, what you call it? I can't think of the name. Uh, crown. We have one crown. Trying to remember what is least unfriendly. That's a heart. Okay. So now we're going here. Gameplay in your keyboard stream? It's livelier than you think. Welcome on back, Dinsdale. I hope the commute wasn't too bad. And no, very clearly no gameplay here. Two. Boom. That one's a timing trick because I have to wait for the power to elapse and make sure that I don't screw up the timing. Boom. Okay. Boom. Okay. So there's still, let's see, that mess over there. And there's still this mess up here. Yeah. Boom. I'm trying not to screw up here. Boom. Okay, so we are doing things. We've come back once from the brink of disaster. We're basically blind running. And somehow I nailed it. I don't get me. W was I a fan of the grenades and dead cells? Uh, explosions are cool. It depended. There were some grenades that I learned to like. But they were not my default mode of dealing with uh, enemies. Boom. Take out them first, because those two were the big problems. Because they do shockwaves. Okay. Okay. We got this. grounds in excess of what we need. <gasps> I was trying to remember if I could go up on top of that and I just won. 
Skydiving without a parachute is bad for your health, folks. I think I'm missing a picture in this area. Though I can't quite remember. I also need to remember how to get to the exit. <laughs> I think it's up on one of the platforms. You'd have to agree with that. The grenades you've used, the frost and fire grenades are your favorite, for obvious reasons. Frost grenades, definitely. Those are the main ones that I recall uh, learning to like. So, we need four to get through this area. So, one of the other big things is if I get extra crowns in an area, then... Excuse me, I don't necessarily have to get all of them in later areas. So, uh... I guess part of the idea is do things that you can do. You don't strictly have to get all of them. Although if you're looking for completion on the pictures like we are, then you're you're doing everything. Okay. I always get really nervous about the tight ropes. Okay. Uh, right. Got it. Boom. No. I somehow... Uh, I did see your featured thing. I did not... I, I'm very remiss. I did not look at things as closely as I should have to be able to speak about them going into stream. <laughs> okay. I was harebrained today. I forgot to take my main ADHD med and uh, thing things... yeah. Brain didn't really happen. I dumped. We're gonna come back for things. We're doing recon. Because we're gonna die. I'm gonna have to redo things. May as well get some more recon in. Okay. We've been here before. I recognize that much. If nothing else. Okay, so we would need three things to move on. Boom. Pogo on up. Okay. Still almost dead. That all looks deadly. Not gonna lie. This looks slightly less deadly. At least at a glance. <gasps> oh, 
Whoa. That's evil because the combined timings. I just jump scared myself running into spikes. I didn't think they were that close. <sighs> I done got poked. Yeah. <laughs> Fire is hot. Lava is hot. Urchins are sharp. Well, that is the list. Yep, that, because I lost all of my health, I have to redo all of this. <gasps> I bonked! I'm such a dingbat. Whoops. Was that an accidental timeout? Ah. <gasps> nah. Oh God. I got punted. <gasps> yeah, there's been discussions about like four different games going on today. I was... <sighs> Irony, Kitty was punted by a kitty. Boom. <laughs> That's always a fun one. When you're trying to figure out what game we're talking about spoilers for. Nah. Stuff like that happens sometimes. I will say... Y'all are still, like, way... So, so, even on our worst day here, with respect to spoilers, oh no, I'm gonna die because an owl is going postal. Nah. Um, the other day, I stopped into a stream for a game that uh, I have streamed before, blind. And... When dealing with puzzle games, especially, there there is that fine line between being able to discuss things in a way that makes sense to people and spoilers. Oh God, I almost walked off the edge. So, it's the kind of thing where like referring to there being X, if someone like the streamer say asks how far you are or how many of X things have you found? If I'm being evasive and trying not to spoil, I will say, I have found all of them. Or, I've found more than you. Sorts of things. Which, by the way, if I'm watching a game that I, like, am streaming at all, you better believe that I've made sure that they're so, they, that I'm so far ahead of where they are that it, it, spoilers ain't happening. But, uh... <laughs> Nah, so... Ooh. Excuse me. But... Yeah, one of the big things, especially about puzzle games, right? Is the experience of it. Is... Once you know the trick, you can't unlearn that. It's one thing if you go off and play a completely different game for, you know, long enough and, and do that enough that you come back to something years later and have to relearn it. 
but generally you you let's put it this way a blind run of la mulana winds up yeah according to some of the folks in the la mulana community 40 in-game hours is about right for uh for a blind playthrough you know, sometimes a little more, sometimes a little less. Depends on how thorough someone is, how much thinking they're doing, you know, unpaused versus paused, etc. But I have 40 in-game hours. Your second playthrough is probably on the order of about 10 hours or less. And in fact, it is not unreasonable without even getting into speedrun territory to complete the game in about six hours. In terms of a sitting with, you know, okay, fine. So so that works out to, what, three or four in-game hours, depending? A puzzle game is very much about the experience of learning and understanding and exploring that. So to run into a game where... And I'm trying to be respectful of this, of the experience. And yes, I will... I'm, I'm not gonna deny answering someone's question to some extent. But it was things like after someone in chat had been repeatedly asking things and being really specific, and I'm talking, the order of magnitude I'm talking about is um, imminent witness spoilers. The order of magnitude that I'm speaking about is on the order of telling er, <laughs> spoiler alert. I'll use a visual. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Um, you know, how many environmental puzzles do you have? Or did you know the lake is a map? And spoilers for the moment. Yeah, Megas, have you found X item yet? Sorts of things. Asking about particulars. If I was trying to ask someone whether they had found the Holy Grail in La Mulana, there are so many different ways that I would ask. Not the least of which being, hey, can you show your inventory screen? Did you get to the room with a thing? Yeah, that's another style that, that is naturally very spoilery. And I have to say, one of the things I've gotten very... <laughs> poor overloading of a term very spoiled by is folks in say the the la mulana community and a lot of the folks in the witness community who have been so fantastic about not spoiling and it's funny because i run into other you know i go into other streams and i see at times completely different behavior now i know that part of it is because the the the, the chunk of if you're looking at a puzzle game or something there's kind of two main ways you might stream it on twitch you know, one is being sort of a collaborative thing, you know, having it be a really community-involved thing. And the other is basically a, a pure blind, as I think of it, a, where it's focused on the streamer's information state. We know that <laughs> the collaborative folks don't necessarily find as much of a home here. But it depends. But, on the other hand, I hit that other audience a lot. And I know that I personally prefer to hang out in streams like that. It's, it's one thing if I end up, you know, talking to someone and basically going and asking in their chat, Hey, you know, is it okay if... Oh, I'm trying to think of a good example. And none is coming to mind. If someone is struggling with La Mulana, say, I may ask, you know, have they been writing things down? Sorts of things. That's the closest that I would ever get to a hint, really. Unless, you know, if someone's really discouraged, I may say something along the lines of, you know, take a look in this area. Or... Yeah, give a cryptic clue sorts of things. You still gotta figure it out. 
you know, if someone asks me how many lasers have I done in a certain game, I'm not going to tell them the number because that... No, that, that, that's not necessarily information that they might have at that time. And... Do you think good formulations are? Would you mind telling me the story so far? Can I take a peek at your inventory? How many rooms have you been in? What did you find most challenging so far? See, those are excellent questions, and those are fantastic. It's also one of the reasons why I tend to reflexively, if I'm playing something puzzle-heavy, I, I try to explain, especially if I see that someone has gotten recently timed out or had a message deleted in chat. I try to circle back and go, by the way, this is sort of our general information state about things. These are some of the things I've been working on so that I'm preempting the question. Thanks. <laughs> it's that ever dreading question. How do I do a let's play of Professor Layton games without just being an answer guide? In some ways, spoilers can also be seen as backseat gaming as well, for telling what's ahead. Like, for instance, anyone who plays Final Fantasy games, it's a given that the gamer would know to save at least one Phoenix, um, Phoenix potion, because that's a thing that's spread along the entire franchise. But let's say if a streamer played FF8 and didn't, didn't play FF9, and you said that it's still a spoiler of sorts, and it can be seen as backseating too, since it's a general rule of thumb that most people abide by. Mm-hmm. No, it's... And yeah, there's some times where we're stricter than others. You know, for, for any puzzle game, for any puzzle-heavy game, not strictly, like, movement puzzle, which is what I start thinking of some of the platforming stuff as, that's a, that's, that falls into the kinesthetic puzzle sort of category. How do I get there from here? But in terms of things like logic puzzles and stuff, it's one of the reasons why we're so damn strict here. <laughs> is because... One, I'm me, and even seemingly unrelated things can sometimes set off thoughts. And it's one thing if you're talking about, you know, some random story from your life and that sets off something in my head. That That's... If it is something that I could come across in a random conversation, you know, walking down the street sort of thing, pick up a snippet of a conversation and have that thought go, yeah, that's fine. But when it's something specific to the work in question... But it's also informed some things like, uh, yeah, I've always sort of struggled to keep fully up to date on chat. Sometimes I'm very responsive and sometimes I have these sort of lag periods. I don't mean to be like giving anyone the cold shoulder or missing anything. Some of it is literally because of since the Fez playthrough and some of the spoilers that came up there. I've had to change how I'm interacting with chat and in particular how fast I'm reading things so it's basically trying to give mods a chance to catch any messages that might be an issue and it sucks because it impacts everyone Ah, opinion is in the type of feather you believe they're referring to. Gotcha. But no, I... It was weird to me, though. Because... It was on the level of, like... There's a whole kind of puzzle, say, that you've never... That, 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 that is hidden, that is a, you know, so, sort of a secret in plain sight kind of thing, or that is heavily prevalent in the game. And it's just like, oh yeah, these exist. Yeah, that's a thing. By the way, you go look here to see your progress. I understand that folks are, you know, keep different levels of blind. I just... It baffles me a little. For things like Hat and Time, it basically came down to no story spoilers, and yeah, I, I chased shinies well enough that 
you know, I should be making a spot check, but... But as a whole, we just haven't been quite as stringent with it. But that's partly because it's a different kind of thing. No, I... I don't know. I've been thinking about it. And seeing this stream and what degree of spoilers were being just openly spoken about, I found myself being very thankful for a lot of the folks around here. And yeah, I specifically cite yeah, the La Mulana and Witness communities as a significant portion of it. Um, that's where a lot of... Eh, there's some folks here right now who've been been hanging out heck <laughs> that I've known for basically two years at this point at least and or near enough and others that are more recent it, it's <sighs> the kind of thing that I have been very fortunate to be surrounded by a lot of awesome people and it shows in a lot of ways and and one of the ways that is hugely impactful but also one of those stupid little things is the way folks ask questions and and like we can we can stream something blind and I can look at chat kinds of things and yeah it also has to deal with uh, some of the awesome mods, folks, and heck, <laughs> one of the things that I've noticed is that uh, it's not just the folks with the mod swords, but y'all sort of help collectively keep an eye on things and go, yeah, not cool. And, and... <laughs> Heck plus. No, I will not stop. <sighs> Thank you, Dinsdale. No. I really do appreciate it, though. This turned into an odd ramble. It happened to just hit close to something that I've been musing over, so whoops. That's how a lot of rambles go. But... Stop stroking my mod's ego. Get back to the game. <laughs> okay, cyber. Oh, it's just... <laughs> yeah, you're good to keep going on Dead Cell stuff. As far as I'm concerned, I'm not doing Dead Cell stuff blind. At all. That's a... Love you, mods. Megas. Hey, you say I can't enjoy the pets. <laughs> but that's what Molly's hanging out for, right? That's what the Flufferus is for. It ate my double jump and I barely made it. This rift is not happening right now. Dins. With your latest spoiler report. Say I'm heckin' great. Mm. But nah, it, it's. <laughs> yeah, thank you for double checking. Cause that all that also feeds into some of the things that I've I just realized I'm at the three hour point. She's around when I should be wrapping up. So we're probably just gonna sit and... I'd talk for a few more minutes? <laughs> Thanks. We still... Er, we have still yet to try and challenge that bug we found. Yeah! To be fair, that was several uh, versions ago. So that may or may not still be present.
<laughs> Random. And as follow-up, legendaries are still totally a thing. Just found one. Oh. Oh, it was hilarious. Oh, I... I... That came off cross as more sarcastic than it was meant to. It wasn't supposed to be sarcastic. I was yawning. I, I, I don't know why I tried to talk through that. That's just a recipe for disaster. But no. So... It's funny. Because... Why am I... This, this music is actually distracting. Oh, dear. This music is actually distracting for me. Basically... It's interesting looking at how people interact with the world. And with different constructs and such. Like, I see a blind playthrough and I'm like, oh! You know, no spoilers, got it. And be very careful about how I phrase things. So, like, if someone were to ask me, you know, if someone playing The Witness were to ask me, you know, what my favorite type of puzzle is thus far, I don't know what they've done. Unless they've clearly articulated. Which, once again, is part of why you get sometimes the... Oh, I've, I checked out the Cherry Grove, I checked out this, I checked out the village, did a whole bunch of things there, I have no idea what's going on with the desert, and things like that. that and and <laughs> it's also why, like, one of the things that emerged about, what, halfway through the La Mulana blind was, especially after it was brought to my attention that we were obscuring a part of the screen with the webcam. Strictly speaking, I was aware of it, but in terms of it being actually relevant, I was a noob streamer. I had my act together on a couple of fronts and just not on others. But one of the things that I uh, did then was I'm like, okay, so we're gonna move the camera so that it's apart from the so that it's not overlapping the game, and uh, I have dead space. So I started taking inventory snips and updating those as I went. But it also meant that, strictly speaking, yes, someone looking at a thumbnail in the directory might happen across, you know, some tiny little, you know, couple pixel indication of an item. But realistically... It's the kind of thing where someone who knows the game can take a glance while yeah, in the directory and go, oh, that's roughly where they are, and decide if they want to watch or not. As well as also meaning that I didn't have to constantly flash my inventory to make sure folks were up to date, and to let me be more fluid. And it honestly just headed off a lot of questions. That was a cool thing. I'm glad that we did it for La Mulana too as well. But, <laughs> the puzzling puzzle. <laughs> now, my answer for something like The Witness, though, would be something like, if you've walked more than about, eh, I don't know, 30 steps from the starting area, you've come across a puzzle that has multiple kinds of rules. So, I don't feel bad saying that some of my favorite puzzles in The Witness are some of the ones that combine you know, three or more puzzle varieties and rules and force you to really think. I can say something like that without it being a spoiler. Now, I got to the point in the one stream where I was like, I'm being intentional, like the parenthetical remark, I'm intentionally being evasive in my answers to avoid spoilers. <laughs> like straight up I'm 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 not just being a little shit. I I'm, I'm I'm trying to not spoil. <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird. And it's also funny to think that I don't know that there's such different ways of doing it which I intellectually understood. That there are, but 
it's the kind of thing where I'm very glad that I'm essentially done the game that I was seeing. Because... If I wasn't... There were a lot of spoilers that came up in chat, just quickly skimming through, that are like major endgame spoilers. I don't know. Like, why would someone want to deprive someone of the discovery? Anywho, I'm on the pensive end of things. I think that it is time to take a look at Throne of Host and take a quick glance through and see who all's live doing what. So. <laughs> I don't know how uh, much y'all are feeling. Uh, in Castlevania. Go for it, Magus. I don't know if y'all are feeling some Castlevania sympathy. Symphony of the Night. I can speak, I swear. But, uh, MQ. That is MQPG. One of the frequent flyers and mods around here. And Chill Dudorino is, uh, Ransacking real estate and ruining Richter's restful resurrection in part three of the Symphony of the Night Blind. So, I think that that is an awesome place for us to head on over to. So, let me really quickly. I think. So let's see, he's using an alliterative title, Ransacking Real Estate and Ruining Resurrection. <laughs> Makes the timely note of, keep in mind those blind questions we talked about earlier. <laughs> yup. Nah, so, I think we will do a raid. I'm trying to think of our, he's got a lot of R's in the title. Ransacking real estate and ruining Richter's restful resurrection. <gasps> I think I know what we're doing. Uh... For some reason, this came to mind. Egg! Oh! No! Egg! 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 We're just going with egg. Just egg! Egg and whatever, uh, emote of choice. I don't know. There's probably not an egg emote, is there? And even if there were, I'd have to say, uh, oof to that one. Bad foreign language jokes. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. That would have been a good one if it was a couple of episodes ago. I was being silly and going, run, run, run as fast as you can. You can't catch us with a kitty bard band. But uh, we're, we're going to go with egg. So just egg. In any case, let's get that going. We're going to be heading over in a sec. Thank you guys so much. I hope you all have been having a good evening. Take care. Have a good night. Friday, we have more Witness. Um, it's not going to be a popcorn session. It's going to be a uh, puzzling session and a spot check session starting at about 3.30 p.m. EDT. So, yeah. Take care. Have a good night. Y'all are awesome.
And I will leave the, you with these final words. Boopa doop. <laughs>